So the first week of carrying this pager, um, go over a couple things here. <clears throat> Battery life. Well, these are nice. I ran around off and on for two days in programming it. These aren't really... <sighs> You lose a drop of capability. You got to take out each battery and you got to plug it into here. And it takes two or three hours. Not a big deal. So I re I restarted the pins on here so I could charge it. Took a little bit, but I got it to work. I also, um, my soldering iron in the Hamfest video broke. The heat element failed in it. And I'll put some pictures up here. You can buy a new heat element for the iron. It's considered antique. The heat elements that they're selling on ebay no matter where i look um or like thirty dollars so i'll just keep using my cheap get get me through chinese soldering iron i don't do much soldering anyways so it'll just be enough to get me through if i do some soldering went to harbor freight got these batteries about six dollars a piece just generic and imh batteries this charger will run them fine um i understand the battery circuitry shuts off etc it will not run these. It doesn't like these. It freaks out and shuts down. Um, I, I've gone reprogramming this about five times, mainly settings, different settings. So it does this. I have the vibrate on now. Selective call frequency one. It talks now. Selective call frequency two. I'm trying to figure out where the... Um, low voltage indicator will come on because lately what's been happening is the batteries they'll last a good good while good time but then i'll go look at the pager just to play around with it and the batteries will be dead um so i turn on the um unread message alert and all these different like reminder tones and stuff so i could see what happens with it um hopefully i'll get a low battery alert at some point monitor frequency one um, hmm. Selective call frequency. Selective call frequency one. Selective call frequency two. Monitor frequency one. So let's go over this real quick. Selective call frequency one. These are 37 and 76 is tones. Selective call frequency two. Davidson Rescue Tones. I'm probably going to take the tones out. They're very busy. Um, and I didn't realize it, but when it's in scan... Monitor frequency one. This is um just to monitor the fire frequency in open mode. And then this normal scans scan. like a normal scanner. And I had to adjust the squelch in a little bit. It's, I, and I changed it because the original person in programming did change it to narrow band. So it sounded kind of quiet. Um, so this will scan and it'll light up. But the problem is it also remembers the tone. So every time Davis and Rescue gets a tone, it'll tone out. And Davis and Rescue tones out a lot. Um, and I can't quite figure it. It dumps it in the stored voice, but I can't reset it. So maybe I'll fix the reset setting and do a manual reset on it instead of a timeout reset. Because um, I'm always with this thing. I'm always with this anyways. Whereas... The unication was basically stays home now because I'm not just carrying this thing to monitor like to the city fire department. And then it blinks like that. Like so you know it's stopping. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess around with the um read settings on this. Also my programming cable. I'll put a picture of it. It's basically um TTL or R uh PL2033, if I to correct what I said there. I, I use these things here, and everybody should have these in their electronics lab. They're so much easier. When you connect two wires to something, I use these things. They have like a little, and you use a little heat gun and melt the two wires, melt this little solder together and a heat streak on it. It works much better than trying to solder two wires, at least with my soldering skills, which are acceptable if that. Um, this I got from like a kit. I got a kit with a bunch of wires. I'm gonna solder this on it here because I lost this wire here, the end of this. And um, you know, I'll just strip it and drop a black one on so I know the color of it. Probably just drop this one on. 
Um, but overall, it works fine with programming. And this is only like 15 bucks. And the other factor is, too, you have to understand that if you were to buy the cradle from Apollo or Motorola or whatever company you're using, the cradle is like two, three hundred dollars. Um, a knockoff Motorola Minotaur cra cradle for program monitor Minotaur four, uh, 5 or whatever one model you want to be made online is like a hundred bucks no matter how you slice it. So, like I said, all I'm interested in is programming my thing here. And I don't have to listen to Endless Dispatch because it's a big county. But anyhow, that's it. We're going to mess around with the programming on this in a few minutes and see what we can do.